Hey guys, this is Dr. Israel with Integrative Kidney Solutions. And in the beginning, I want to apologize for our absence for the past few months. You know, uh, I'm a practicing nephrologist and sometimes uh, our practice can get uh, super busy. Uh, but you guys were amazing. Uh, you continue to, views, uh, to view our channel. So thank you uh, so much for the views and uh, for continuing to support us. And for all the subscribers, we are really uh, happy that we have more than 500 subscribers so far. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking to you about climate change and kidney health. So let's do this. So sometimes in the uh, 90s, nephrologists start noticing that a group of young agricultural workers in Central America has been coming down with chronic kidney disease uh, without any uh, risk factors that predispose them to uh, kidney disease development. So uh, in the past two decades, they've been looking for the cause of this. Uh, some suggested that it could be due to um, chemicals used in uh, uh, agricultural uh, practices. Some suggested it could be due to heavy metal exposure. Uh, some talked about silica inhalation. Uh, and uh, some also suggested that it could be an infectious uh, disease or even genetic predisposition. Mm -hmm. When they looked into this issue further, they actually identified that these workers are working regularly for long hours in hot and humid conditions. And then uh, they uh, studied this exposure and found that heat stress uh, is actually, heat stress can, was found to cause kidney injury. Uh, the type of chronic disease that affected these agricultural workers in Central America is now called uh, chronic kidney disease of unknown origin, or CKDU. Since the 90s, we actually identified CKDU in uh, not only in Central America, but also in uh, Africa, in India, in the Middle East, in Sri Lanka. Um, and um, it, it, the common connection between all these is hot and humid conditions. So uh, what makes this more complicated is that CKDU uh, does not follow the conventional risk factors for kidney disease. So it is challenging to detect early and to prevent. So it, what is, makes, it, makes it also more complicated that is also affect uh, uh, poor and underprivileged uh, communities uh, that has poor infrastructures. But on the other side, it does actually occur even in the United States. So there were reports that uh, CKDU has been observed in Florida and California and the same working conditions were found uh, to be associated with it again. And you know we have been talking about the CKD epidemic uh, in several videos in our blogs uh, and um, you know there's no doubt that the prevalence of kidney disease is rising in the United States and throughout the world. In fact one in seven people in the United States has kidney disease and it is one of the fastest growing causes of death throughout the globe. Uh, an estimated 5 to 10 million people die annually from kidney disease worldwide. Unfortunately, due to poor data and lack of awareness, early detection, access to care, these numbers continue to underestimate the exact burden of chronic kidney disease. And when you combine these data with the fact that the global temperature uh, on Earth has uh, increased by 1 uh, degree centigrade in the past um, 50 to, 10, to 100 years, depending on where you look at, uh, you cannot not help yourself from making a connection between the rising temperature and the rising incidence of kidney disease and prevalence of kidney disease. And according to the United Nations, the uh, climate change uh, will continue to worsen uh, in the future uh, and expected to worsen many health problems uh, in many vulnerable populations, including children's, uh, uh, children and the elderly. Uh, in fact, uh, climate change has been associated with the rise of many infectious diseases, especially waterborne illnesses like cholera, typhoid, uh, dysentery. It is also contributing to increased burden of many chronic diseases, including chronic kidney disease or CKDU. But how does rising temperature affect chronic kidney disease and kidney health? 
Yeah, the evidence indicate that heat stress and dehydration can result in chronic kidney disease worldwide. In fact, actually, the progression of kidney disease and kidney injury was found to worsen with rising core body temperature. And the mechanism appears to be linked to um, adenosine triphosphate, reduced adenosine triphosphate or ATP, and reduced mitochondria. Uh, these energy powerhouses are abundant in the kidneys, especially in the tubules of the kidneys. And if you have a reduced ATP and mitochondria, you are talking about uh, increased oxidative stress and increased uh, cellular damage, which definitely lead to chronic kidney disease and kidney injury. Now, if you add on top of that, that these populations are uh, you know, underprivileged and they're um, also subjective to uh, poor uh, nutrition and they also do not have um, intake of antioxidants, then you are actually talking about increased oxidative stress without any mitigation. And this is actually supported by uh, animal studies. So uh, they actually, scientists took uh, rats and subjected them to heat stress and they fed some rats antioxidants and some others they did not. And they found that antioxidants do indeed protect uh, rats' kidneys from developing uh, kidney damage. Now, another factor that is uh, associated with heat and can lead to uh, kidney damage is development of kidney stones. So uh, it is noted that heat uh, has been linked to increased risk uh, of kidney stones. Uh, and please check out a blog about uh, kidney stones. We're going to put a link to it in the comments below. Um, the kidney stones uh, are actually, kidney stones are actually a known risk factors for kidney disease. And on top of that, uh, the kidneys are the major sites for metabolism and elimination of toxins. So exposure to toxins such as glyphosate in, uh, um, in the soil uh, contribute to kidney injury due to oxidative damage. And we talked about glyphosate uh, in the past and how it's uh, associated with dysbiosis and um, has a negative impact on, uh, on the gut health. So this could be another layer how climate change can affect kidney health through the gut-kidney connection. And we'll put a, a link here to our video on uh, gut-kidney connection, so please check it out. And if you add dehydration and decreased water uh, intake, uh, that will lead to uh, you know higher concentration of these uh, toxins in the kidneys and amplify their uh, impact, leading to further kidney damage. And you can add to that uh, you know contamination of the environment with uh, pollution uh, from heavy metals, plastics, chemicals like herbicides and uh, pesticides and um, also the rise in uh, use of chemicals. Um, uh, you can think of uh, mercury uh, contamination in fish and arsenic in rice. Uh, and these uh, heavy metals have been associated with the rise of uh, chronic kidney disease. So uh, we talked about arsenic and kidney health before, so we're gonna put a, a, a video to share that with you again. And finally, with climate change, we're seeing a lot of food insecurity um, and uh, poor farming practices, and we're seeing uh, less uh, access to fresh food and uh, produce. You see a lot of populations are getting more and more dependent on processed food that, is, uh, that has decreased nutritional values, decreased contents of vitamins and minerals, and uh, phytonutrients and antioxidants and on one side you have increased oxidative stress and on the other side you have decreased contents of antioxidants in the food and and processed food uh, also have less um, fibers so you're also causing more uh, damage to your gut health and that's another layer related to the gut kidney connection again so it's not all doom and gloom though what can be done what can be done to prevent kidney disease in these situations and it could sound like a cliche but actually hydration is a key here uh, for those in labor uh, industries and, and those working in uh, agricultural uh, areas uh, increased exposure to heat and chemicals 
um, extra effort should be made to uh, hydrate um, adequately. And, and from a public health perspective, a lot of uh, policies and measures need to be taken to uh, uh, protect these uh, workers that are being exposed to uh, a lot of heat stress. And you should also remember that heat exposure is amplified when uh, someone is taking uh, some particular medications. So think about uh, diuretics uh, such as furosemide or hydrochlorothiazide. Think about uh, ACE inhibitors or ARBs that can uh, decrease the circulation to the kidneys and HGLT2 inhibitors that also have uh, uh, weak diuretics effects. And on the other side, we talked about how heat can lead to energy depletion in the kidneys and uh, oxidative stress. So really increased intake of antioxidants can help to prevent the um, um, effect of climate change on the kidneys and heat stress on the kidneys. We hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please feel free to press the like button below and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel uh, and press the notification button. Uh, for more information, feel free to uh, leave comments below. Also, we'll be happy to respond to these comments and uh, feel free to check, out, check us out on social media and on www.inkidney.com.